I am here to welcome everybody to a beautiful journey through Bjorn's brain today. <laughs> Did that sound creepy, Bjorn? Uh, a bit, but uh, let's give it a try. But that's what we're let's gonna do. Let's see where we end up. Yeah. That's what yeah. we're gonna do. Sure. So we are going to look into how did you make the game for the Game Jam. So the theme was boss, and, and my idea was to make a game similar to maybe Knife Hit, like this, knife this hit. Uh -huh. where you throw knives. Uh -huh. And there's a game on uh, that you see quite frequently on, on Twitter called Sword Shot, mm -hmm. which is has the same kind of mechanic. But I wanted mm -hmm. to do it more in like a, not an open world, but uh, here it's very fixed in, in like a portrait mode. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to have like a hero moving around and then a boss in mm -hmm. the middle. And and the challenge I wanted to to solve was how to design interesting bosses using like these patterns of stuff that that the knife hit, for instance, you have the knives and you can't yeah. hit the other knives. And here in, in Sword Shot, you have like stuff uh, around the boss that you're, you're not allowed to hit. So I wanted to, to, to see how I would design such a system. Uh, so that was like the, the goal for me. I, I'm, not, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm very much like a person solving problems and, and, and enjoying the technical challenges. It's not so much, I'm not a game designer, so I'm crap at creating content. OK, so you move around here. You can throw knives at the boss. You can move forward and backwards. And, and that's basically the game. Right. Uh, and then you have like these things rotating around the boss. So the it's swamp. like, yeah, the, the, the shields. And you, you take damage from these. Um, Right, but what stops you from just being far away and just throwing? I exactly. So, so uh, as I said, I, I suck at game design. Uh, so the <laughs> the revamped version, which we can have a look at instead. Um, now I know it wasn't me. So it's it's. I feel better now. Yeah. <laughs> so so you should first of all you should have died. Uh, no. So there was a bug in the submitted mm -hmm. version. Uh, and here also you have lives, uh -huh. so so there's a challenge here. Every time you hit like uh, one of the shields, your your uh, health right. is reduced. That's so, cool. So so this is a bit more challenging. Yeah, I mean, no, the first it makes more sense. Is, yeah. So so but this is basically the 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 game, and the the, the bosses become increasingly hard, mm -hmm. and and there's like yeah, the you actually need to time stuff here and yeah. avoid things and so on. So it, it becomes harder. So it's kind of basic. It's just the menu, the screen, and the pop-up. But I used Monarch. So this mm -hmm. is the screen manager that, that I created. And, and, and the pop-ups? Yeah, the pop-up is, is, is a Monarch screen. Mm -hmm. So you can have a, a, a screen as a full screen thing, and you can have pop-ups. So you can have a screen on top of another screen. Right. And then it becomes a pop-up. But what, what we're trying to do here is to say, like, if a default newcomer watches this video, like, can they learn something from you being the default guru? Like, how to make the game? So you start with an empty project, then you went in, added in some of your favorite extensions. I see Monarch, I see Ludibit. Yeah, so, so I used uh, Monarch, which is the screen manager. I, I use default orthographic, which is just a camera extension, so I can have... Uh, a fixed zoom uh, and the camera can follow a game object. It's very easy to, to add that kind of functionality. Uh, I have an input library so I can uh, remap keys and, and get input states. So uh, in my update loop, I can query for uh, pressed keys and move the player mm -hmm. based on, on key states. And then Ludobits, which is like uh, a mixed bag of stuff that I usually use. So I mm -hmm. use like a sequence manager, so you can can run stuff in sequence. Uh, and there's also like a signal functionality for for sending messages. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Now, do you separate the U from the controller? Do you separate GUI from from the code? Well, uh, so so the main collection is is. It's an empty collection with the three screens that I have. So I have the game screen, the menu screen, okay. and the pop-up. And then there's just the controller. Just It launches the game and launches into the menu. Mm -hmm. The menu is just the GUI, very simple. You, you, you press, right. and then you just navigate to the next screen. So, so the, the, the core of the stuff is, of course, in the game. Why do you have this loader semi-empty, like, well, I mean, you, you want the game to start fast, yes. and then then you have the screens in uh, collection proxies. Mm -hmm. So so you you have just like a very tiny 
thing loaded in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then when you switch screen, right. you, you can. What I'm trying to, to understand, are you like how are you splitting the the pieces of content into like are these bits by functionality bits or or like how do you split the? Screen? Well, so, so on a high level, it's it's three screens. But if we yeah. go into the game, for instance, which is is the the most complex part, I guess there's a UI with a HUD. So the health bars that we saw, it's it's a very dumb UI. So it it only contains like logic for updating the bars, but it doesn't mm -hmm. contain any state. So so the game itself contains the state. The player knows itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the boss knows itself. And when the boss gets damaged, it sends a message to the UI to update. And it mm -hmm. says, this is the current health, and this is the max. And then the UI just updates right. the bar. Okay. 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 Uh, so there's no logic in the UI just calculating the size of the bar, the health bar. Okay. Um, then I have like two main scripts, I guess. Uh, the, the game script, which sets up the levels that you can play. Like the the message that goes into the pop up, which boss to meet, uh, some logic for creating a boss uh, and communicating with the player. So it has some state here. So I can load a level. I get a message when the boss is dead, when the player is dead, when the level should start, and when to go back to the menu. So so this is just a controller responding to messages. Okay. So this all sounds to me like you have. Like each piece of content, maybe each game object, or maybe each logical piece of content, like is self-sustainable. Like they don't really care about the rest of the game. They have all the functionality built in, yeah. and then they react <coughs> to the messages. Yeah, exactly. So default is built around message passing. So it it makes a lot of sense to 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 control the flow using now messages. Now the creepy question: How busy is your update? I uh, it's uh, so I have uh, the the player here, the player script. So the player collection contains, yeah. So it's a, a, a root object. Mm -hmm. It has some some sprites here for the uh, helmet and the armor, and they bob up and down using a geo animate. There's a weapon, a collision object, a script, and a factory. A factory mm -hmm. is to create the the weapons that you you throw the projectiles. Mm -hmm. And the the script then it's. Uh, Let's see. I mean, there is an update loop, of course. Mm -hmm. So in, in it, I bind my set up my key bindings. Uh, but that's in it. That's, yeah, that's health. Uh, I have a final where I clean mm -hmm. up a bit. And the update. Update. Yes. It's, it's not uh, a few lines. No, it's not. Uh, let's do it like this. Uh, new fe feature, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I like it. I, yeah. was, I was like jaw dropping. Yeah. So uh, so there's of course a bit of code here. So uh, I, I check the key states. So if I if I press any of the keys, I need to move the the the, the player either in and out towards the boss or in a circle around it. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a bit of code to get the position, calculate the current angle. So so which yeah. angle I'm facing towards the boss, and then moving. So there's a bit of code, but it's not much. I mean, yeah. it's but it's running everything. We're frame. not prohibiting like putting stuff to update. No, but no. What would have been the alternative way to do it? Like doing a controller script that sort of checks it, but then it's saying per frame. I mean, it, or per second. I mean, but per second doesn't make sense. It makes I sense mean, per the, frame. in this game, I have movement in in two ways. So I, I move in and out mm -hmm. towards the boss, yeah. and then radial around yeah. the boss. Uh, so it. it would be hard to use geo animate, which mm -hmm. is the preferred way. You, you, mm -hmm. If you can move something using geo animate, then you should do it because then you don't have to have an update function. Geo animate animates a game object from one position to another. Uh, it's the engine that does it, so it's very performant. So, for instance, when when I spawn uh, a weapon, mm -hmm. so and when I throw a weapon, that's just a geo animate from the player position into the middle. Uh, so there's no script, uh, no script for updating, no yeah. update function on the weapon script, for instance. Uh, so, so yeah, you, you, I mean, you, you can't always not have, have an update loop. OK. So nobody should shame themselves? No, but themselves you, you, should, uh, uh, you should, of course, like, not have many update functions because <laughs> that's going to be expensive. So, so I have one update function on the player and one update function on the boss, and that's it. 
So there's two pieces of code running every frame. So I guess the next part is like, it's the boss that is like the complex thing here mm -hmm. and, and the, the problem that I wanted to solve because uh, I wanted to figure out the way to define boss behavior in a simple, simple fashion. So if we look at the boss definitions here, so, so this is like the code for the first boss. So I, uh, so the boss graphics floats up and down like this. Uh, then I create like a boss object. Uh, and then I define waves. Uh, I call it wave. A wave is mm -hmm. a, a group of objects in a circle around it. So this here, is game objects, right? Yeah. So here I right, I so have you. created a function called create wave. Uh, it takes like the boss instance, a factory to create stuff from. It says that it should be shields. There should be four of them. They should be fifty pixels from the boss. Mm -hmm. And then there's functionality to create the game objects and and arrange them around the boss. Yeah. And then I have like the logic here for for moving. Them. So I s and this will run in a loop using a coroutine, which is a Lua function for running something in something similar to a thread. Mm -hmm. And while the thing is running, you can you can yield and wait for it to finish. So I use GeoAnimate here to animate stuff. So this is a simple boss, but if we look at the more complex thing here, so I have I I can define a behavior here. So so first. The uh, the skulls should strafe 300, mm -hmm. 360 degrees over four seconds. When they have done a full rotation, they should move 100 pixels out from the boss center. A bit of math. And then rotate again, move another 100 pixels, rotate, and then move in again. And this is defined in a sequence here, but this is running over many frames, like several seconds. And it's all thanks to coroutines that I can do it like this. How did you pick the right numbers here? Do you just like magically know, or uh, did you? Yeah, I I had to iterate a bit on it, but it's it's. Um, so yeah, you it's... just had the game running and just trying the numbers, or? Yeah, I had it set up so I was on the boss uh, collection mm -hmm. from the start, so I could just. Did you yeah. use on reload for that, or did you just hot reload? Uh, no, I just built and ran, actually. Yeah. I didn't use hot reload in this case. And I have the logic in a Lua file. And Lua files are harder to mm -hmm. hot reload. So. OK. So, but, so this was, I guess, the technical stuff. I mean, it's just a few lines of code. But there's a lot of stuff happening inside of here. So I create a core routine. I start an animation on a, on a game object property, move stuff, and then yield and wait, and then continue to the next step in the boss logic here. So. This was, I guess, the technical challenge of, of doing the game jam, uh, and what I was most like curious about. Could I create a simple system for for defining boss behavior uh, using just a few lines of code? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like how it <coughs> extends and, yeah. and how it's easy to maintain, and how how easy it would be for you to to add the, the next boss or exactly. to adjust yeah. The, yeah. the complexity. Yeah, so so that was my my challenge, and then I. I ran out of time in the end. I had a couple of good days in the beginning of the jam, and then uh, in the end, <coughs> less time. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, I solved the technical problems and then didn't have enough time to create game content, which is a shame. Like, and the rendering, did you modify the rendering? I, I, except for the camera, because no. the like, two-bit graphics is fine. Yeah, yeah no, so, so I, I, I used the, the more or less the default render script just with the camera view and projection. So it's, it's um, here we go. So <laughs> the, the new feature. Yeah, the new feature. Yeah, so, so basically I changed the near and far plane so I could mm -hmm. have a, a bit of a wider span of Z values, uh, set the zoom uh, and the fixed zoom here. And, and mm -hmm. that's basically it and saying that it should follow the player. But the rest of the render script is, is default. <laughs> Is the source for this game on the GitHub already? Yes, or not it is. Oh, it is, of course. Yes. Then the link is down. Yeah, yeah. So it's here, and, and there's not that many commits, but more or less one one per day. So day. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe not day three, four, and five at least, and seven. Good. Yeah. So we we'll walked through Bjorn's brain. Hope this was of some use.
Okay. Okay. Plus kill. Sorry, I didn't. Is it just like? So the problem I see right now is that I died. Yes, that's a problem. But also, and we will try a few more episodes like this with uh, Johnny and Sven, and then we'll see your feedback and we'll know if you shall continue or not. So it's all on you. And thanks for watching. Thanks. It started at the age of the swamp. A sinister presence lurks into the fall waters. Kill it for fame and fortune. Good. <laughs>